So, TJ Hushmanzada spoke about the rough start for the Cincinnati Bengals. And he talked about who is going to be pretty much canned if, you know, things doesn't start turning around. And the person he talked about was, of course, Coach Zach Taylor. So, let's talk about this. So, what he had to say on the podcast just recently. He said, the Patriots offense is better than the Bengals right now. Kuzmanzad said, as the host of airing two out on FUBU uh, Sports, the only offense worse is the Giants. And when you look at the Patriots and Giants, they don't have the player that I just named. Not on the offensive side of the ball. If you look at the LA Rams and you look at the Cincinnati Bengals, you had to just pick one offense and you can't go player for player. 99% of football people will take the Bengals. But the Rams offense is considerably better than what the Bengals have done thus far early in the season. So someone has to take the blame. That's just what it is. And before we get into a second statement here, let's go ahead and dissect this and break this down. Honestly, I would think, realistically speaking, a lot of people would actually take the Rams because Puka right now is looking like the second coming of Cooper Cup, and he actually looks really freaking good. And Matthew Stafford, when he is protected, which against us he wasn't, but every other game he has been, he's pretty good when he's actually protected. I mean, I think a lot of people forget that Matthew Stafford is actually a pretty dang good quarterback. I know we like to think that he's not that great, but at the end of the day, he's actually a pretty dang good quarterback. Um, and again, you know, they ha also have Kyron Williams, their running back, rookie running back who's really performing at a top level. They also have Tutu Atwell, who's looking really good. And if you want to go player for player when they're healthy, Cooper Cup is one of the, is a top 15 receiver in the NFL right now when he is fully healthy. So I really would say, overall-wise, it's very close between the two teams. I think Joe is way better than Matthew Stafford. But honestly, right now, you know, with Joe not being 100%, I would almost... Might as well take Matthew Stafford right now. Probably not. Not at all. Honestly, I'd probably rather take Joe than Matthew Stafford in any way. But, you know, like, you could at least make the aspect. Not really. But Matthew Stafford's still a good quarterback. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. I just disagree with my own point. I just made a counter to my own point. Um, But no. On the real note, though, yes. The Rams actually have a pretty solid offense. I think we're better than the New York Giants, okay? I don't think the New York Giants... I mean, I don't know because against the Cardinals, New York Giants actually did nothing in the first half, got blown out. But in the second half, they really came back. But we did the same thing to the Ravens, right? Second half, we actually came back. We lost the game. We look good in the second half. So I think over then, what, week one, the Giants lost 40 to nothing. We lost 27 to 3. Week one, we lost, what, 27 or 24 to 3. And the Giants just lost their... I mean, yeah, I guess you can't really compare Apple Oranges. I mean, Apple's Apples here because they also play tougher opponents, I feel like, than we did. But still, nonetheless, so, you know, I, I think the Giants' offense is a tad bit worse than us. And that's not saying much. But without Saquon Barkley, they're, you know, worse than us. But again... We have playmakers. We have the guys that should be making plays to make us way better than them in every way possible. So, it's no excuses. So, the second half of what he says here is if heads start to roll, meaning if people start getting fired for what, you know, this piss poor offense is looking like so far this year, it's going to be Zach Taylor because Joe is going nowhere, Hoosman Zada said. Joe will play with the Bengals until he retires. They're not letting Joe go play for another team. Zach needs to figure out where is the disconnect and say, why aren't we moving the ball? The Bengals should be much better, and Zach Taylor ultimately, if it comes down to this path, he will take the lion's share of the blame. There's no other way around it. So he needs to figure out this sooner than later because they went into the season not with aspirations of winning the division. Everyone assumed that this was the foregone conclusion that that was a foregone conclusion. But it was Super Bowl or bust. And right now, they aren't even getting into the playoffs. And right now, the team ranks gives the Cincinnati Bengals a 14.5% chance to make the playoffs as of right now at this moment in time. And listen, 
I disagree with TJ. I love TJ who's from Nottawa, by the way. I absolutely love him. I actually have his sign helmet, well, behind this green screen. I have his sign helmet. I love him. He's an amazing receiver. He actually played for the Ravens, and he played for the Bengals, mainly the Bengals. But he also played for the Ravens at the end of his career. But um, I think the first person fired if this offense continues to struggle and really goes downhill is Brian Callahan. And how I look at it, and this comes with every team pretty much. It's not just the Bengals. This is how everything works. When a team is not working, right? What usually comes down to is, because listen, GMs, head coaches, owners, they love to find scapegoats. It's just how it works, right? Because they don't want the blame on them. So if the offense isn't working, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to say, oh, offense coordinator, that's the guy. That's the problem. <laughs> we would be so much better if we didn't have that offensive coordinator. They're going to fire the offense coordinator. Then, if the defense isn't working, they're going to fire the defense coordinator. Now, the head coach and GM. I'm not saying it's going to work with the Bengals exactly like this. The Bengals are a different team than all other teams in the NFL, just in general. You know, they, the way they operate is nothing like other teams. But I'm just saying this is for the generic team, okay? For the generic situation. Next thing that's going to happen is the, co the coach is going to put in a new defense and offense coordinator. If those guys do not work out, right, then they're going to fire the head coach. If they bring a new head coach in and it still wasn't working out, most likely they're going to either fire the GM or they're going to think about drafting another quarterback. Most likely they'll fire GM at first, bring in a whole new, you know, coach and GM type of combo. They're bringing new coordinators, new coaches. And if all that doesn't work out, then they look at the quarterback. So my point is, the last thing, right, on these coaches, these owners, these teams' minds is blame the quarterback. That's the last thing they're going to do. They're going to go through every single stipulation possible. That's why I saw Baker Mayfield with the Browns. He has, like, what, five coordinators in six years. Because they will look at every single possibility of what to get, what to correct, what to fix, what to do before they look at the quarterback. Because at the end of the day, the mentality is, well, you know what? With a good enough coach, we can win with this quarterback. And the last thing they want to do is have to rebuild. Because rebuilding a quarterback, going with a new quarterback, that is the most difficult thing you can do as an NFL team, right? You can always go get another coach. Coaches get, you know, uh, not released, but coaches every year are up for being hired, right? Every single year. You can always get a new offensive coordinator. You can always get a defense coordinator. It's hard to get a good quarterback. So if you think your quarterback is good or great or, you know, potential, they will do everything under the sun to avoid getting rid of that quarterback. There's just no reason to, right? You, you want to do everything else. So... Now let's talk about the Bengals because the Bengals are a different team. They do not operate like the normal team. They are a very, you know, differently run organization. Zach Taylor calls majority of the offensive plays, okay? It is what it is. It's the truth, right? And also, of course, Brian Callahan is an offensive coordinator, but it really comes down to Zach Taylor. So to TJ's point, in this situation, I do believe, yes, Zach Taylor will be the first person that will be uh, on the hot seat. But I think it will be a combination of Zach Taylor and Brian Callahan. I don't think it would just be Zach Taylor. I think it might be, honestly, a joint effort here of both of those guys on the hot seat. And if one guy goes, I think both of them goes. I don't think it's just going to be one guy goes if it ends up being that. But again, like I said, I 1000% do not believe Zach Taylor or Brian Callahan will ever be fired. I do not believe Lou Anarumo will be fired. And I know Zach's, I mean, so now I know TJ's not actually saying that. TJ's saying if this is the worst case scenario and something like this did happen, like, you know, the 1% chance in the hypothetical universe far, far away, this happened, then this is what he's talking about. He's not speaking as in this is going to happen. I know a lot of people probably, I can't wait for the news sources, that's media sources, say he, this is what he said. He's not speaking of it in that way. He's just saying if it does happen, right? I don't think it's going to happen. But if it did happen in the hypothetical universe, 
I think there would be honestly I feel like it almost to a point where you clean house I would feel like um, if you're gonna let Zach Taylor go you're gonna let Brian Callahan go and I think you're you're definitely gonna keep Lou if you can but I don't know it depends really honestly it does depend it depends on how bad the defense is looking because this year so far defense has been looking kind of up and down but again, like I said, it really depends on how everything kind of shakes out. So, it is what it is. Um, we did have Super Bowl bust, you know, for this season. And, you know, it was, I, I'll admit it, we were very cocky thinking that we were going to win a division 100%. And the funny thing is, I still think we can win a division. But that's beside the point. Maybe I'm just, like, way too optimistic. But, um, yeah, it's, it is what it is, man. At the end of the day, you know, you just got to keep grinding, keep fighting, and Go right back to work and try your best and put your best production out there, right? So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.